The year was 1987, until Captain Buck Rogers and his Ranger 3, a space explorer got unexpectedly diverted and Buck was frozen for five centuries. Far beyond the world I've known. This was sci-fi back before it saturated the market. The series pilot episode, which was movie length, was given a theatrical release before it began on TV. And the film garnered over $21 million in North America alone. And while the show only lasted two seasons, they were two very memorable ones, sometimes achieving that deja vu effect. Mostly because to cut costs, some footage and various props were used from creator Glenn Larson's previous project, 1978's Battlestar Galactica. But we're not here to talk about that Lauren Green vessel. We're discussing Gil Gerard's Buck Rogers, a cross between Han Solo and James Bond. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and if you enjoy our futuristic deep dive, Please give this episode a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more throwbacks. But now, without further ado, the future awaits. Gil Gerard. Captain Buck Rogers was a former U.S. Air Force pilot and astronaut who, following a freak accident during a deep space flight, finds himself awakened in 2491, learning that everyone he ever knew was gone. Remember his frozen look from the pilot? Gerard was sprayed all over with an ordinary dry shampoo, so he couldn't open his eyes or move. But Gil Gerard was wide awake when he stepped onto the acting scene in 71. His big break was from 73 to 76, when he played Dr. Alan Stewart in over 300 episodes of The Doctors. Then in 77, he was part of probably the best entry in the airport franchise, as Gerard played Frank Powers. Then it was time for Buck Rogers, which he followed with a stream of TV movies, before headlining the short-lived 1986 series Sidekicks, as a cop who tutored the martial martial arts skilled sidekick played by Ernie Reyes Jr. But soon the roles were kinda drying up, best exemplified by his 1990 series Earth Force, cancelled by CBS after just three episodes. It's one good thing about a worst case scenario, once you put it out there things can only get better, right? Gerard was the subject of a documentary that was written and directed by his then longtime companion, Adrian Crow. It documented his life-saving mini gastric bypass surgery done in October of 2005. Gerard's problem with his weight stemmed from his addictive personality, having gone through recovery for cocaine and alcohol abuse, following his divorce from actress Connie Selica in the mid 80s. And by the time of the documentary, his weight had risen to over 350 pounds, with many life-threatening health problems in tow. But the surgery was life-changing and within 10 months, Gil had lost a total of 145 pounds. And it helped him get back in front of the camera, even reuniting with his Buck Rogers co-star Aaron Gray for the TV movie Nuclear Hurricane in 2007. Sure, he's not making any classics, but at least the 78-year-old actor is still at it. I guess I'll come back next week and say goodbye. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Tweaky. Here we must toast to two parts of the essential Tweaky. The small drone that was created to work in the space mines. Felix Silla provided the physical performance. Born in Italy, he was trained as a circus performer before coming to the US in 55, where he jumped right back into things with the Ringling Brothers Circus. In 1963, he began acting, and just two years later, he became the ever so hairy cousin It as part of the ever so creepy Adams family. His small stature lent to some truly iconic roles, from the polka dotted horse in H.R. Puffin Stuff, to an Ewok in 1983's Return of the Jedi. His last big small role was as the Emperor Penguin in 1992's Batman Returns. Sadly, Scylla died in April of 2021. After battling with pancreatic cancer, he was 84 years old. And we must include the legendary Mel Blanc, who provided the voice of Tweaky. Someone isn't gonna like that. Originally, Tweaky was intended to only make unintelligible electronic noises. You know, the beady 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 sounds. Beady 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 beady. What about Buck? 
but they determined that that was too similar to R2-D2 in Star Wars. So he was given a voice too. And everyone knows Mel Blanc was the man of a thousand voices, regarded as one of the most influential voice actors of all time, giving life to such iconic characters as Bugs Bunny, Mr. Spacely, and Barney Rubble. Mel Blanc passed away in 1989 at the age of 81. Tim O'Connor Dr. Hewer leads the Defense Directorate. He was the helpful and statesman-like figure who took Buck under his wing. And Dr. Hewer was wise and gave a bit of stability to this far out series, even when he had to break it to Buck that Chicago and everything like it was no more on Earth. No, it isn't. There's nothing like Chicago left on Earth. Tim O'Connor began acting in the mid-50s and is best known as Elliot Carson on the long-running show Peyton Place. From 64 to 68, he was in over 400 episodes. Aside from Buck Rogers, he also had recurring roles on Barnaby Jones and Dynasty. One of his final notable roles was in The Naked Gun 2 and a Half. O'Connor semi-retired from acting in 1997, with one exception, re-teaming with Aaron Gray for the 2011 drama Dreams Awake. Tim O'Connor was an avid sailor, owning a 32-foot Pearson Vanguard sailboat, enjoying sailing to the waters off Mexico. Sadly, Tim died in 2018 from colon cancer at his home in California. O'Connor was 90 years old. Eric Server Dr. Theopolis, also known as Theo, was the intelligent computer that looked kinda like a jukebox. He was in charge of assimilating Buck when he woke up from his deep sleep. Well, you're Captain Buck Rogers, and according to your ship's log, you left Earth in 1987. Eric began acting in the early 70s and frequented many hit shows, from five episodes of The Streets of San Francisco to a series regular gig in BJ and the Bear from 79 to 81. Similar to his co-star O'Connor, he stopped acting after his 1993 role in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but also returned for one more role in 2014's Mom's Night Out. Today, Server is 76 years old, lives in Burbank with his wife and two children, and works as a licensed tax consultant with his son at Server and Associates LLP. Tom Christopher Hawk was known as a half-man, half-bird warrior for the second season of the show. Where his wings went, we'll never know, but his bird spacecraft was pretty sweet. These childish maneuvers, they begin to bore me. Tom Christopher may be best known for his role in Buck Rogers, or you may remember his two-parter from season four of Kojak, or perhaps his 24-episode arc on One Life to Live as Carlo Hesser. Christopher hasn't acted much since that soap arc, but he was part of the 2017 film Addicted. Today, he is 81 years old and hopefully still rocking that bird helmet. The indication of my bird, bird presence being a headpiece that I wear. Oh, you nice. mentioned the feathers. It's magnificent. It's an incredible yeah. headpiece. Aaron Gray. Colonel Deering was in charge, and a romantic interest for Buck, as well as a hopeful romantic interest for all the young men watching Buck Rogers back in the day. Her character was a commanding, loyal defender of Earth. It's Colonel Deering, commander of Earth's defenses. Take this barbarian in for interrogation. Aaron Gray began working first as a model, dropping out of UCLA and moving to New York City to do so. And by 1975, she was one of the nation's best, earning around $100,000 a year. She even played a model in her first ever acting gig, a 1976 episode of Mauled. But her Buck Rogers role is what she's best remembered for, especially by the male sex. Did you uh, like that? But Erin was aware of her sex appeal. It wasn't hard to pick up on when her costume was so tight that she had to be sewn into it. Reminds me of Sandy from Greece. Check out that video we made for more on that tight final costume. But Erin Gray was high profile within the show. And as the female lead, second only to the title character, she represents one of the early examples of a strong female character in a sci-fi setting. She stated, quote, a woman can be a colonel, a woman can be in charge. Then in the 1980s, she co-starred yet another hit TV show as Kate Summers in Silver Spoons. She may never reach Buck Rogers or Silver Spoons height again, but she's still working, starring in the 2006 musical comedy Siren, 
and most recently she's populated some lifetime holiday flicks. The most popular being 2018's My Christmas Inn. Aside from acting, she also dabbles as a booking agent. Erin is 71 years old today and is a longtime enthusiast regarding ancient arts working as an instructor of Tai Chi at UCLA. All right, let's make our way back to the 21st century. And we must admit that they nailed the 25th century. So what was your favorite episode of Buck Rogers? Who saw the pilot movie in theaters? Did you have a favorite character from the show? Please let us know in the comments below, we read them all. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up icon and send us into orbit. And subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember? Thank you very much for watching.